Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to our session on Next Best Action. It's uh, very exciting to be doing this. I've been the product manager of Next Best Action for the last year, and we are very close to becoming a real product and making it generally available. I'm Alex Edelstein. Uh, I work with the team in Salesforce here in San Francisco. I've got Sarin Devraj with me, who's our product marketing manager, and a whole cast of very impressive partners and customers who are going to be sharing some demos. <laughs> is, that, is that from next door? Tell me that's not from next door. Join Salesforce, they said. It'll be fun, they said. OK, so <laughs> forward-looking statement, as you know, um, as you know, uh, please make your purchase decisions based only on publicly available product. So the story of Next Best Action at Salesforce starts with the, with the observation that companies have access to more insight than ever before. It used to be that uh, uh, you get one printout from a mainframe a month. And then predictive models started coming available. And if you were lucky, you had one predictive model that you could glean information from. And now there's a lot of sources of insight. You can see just on this slide, we've listed several that Salesforce makes available, different parts of Salesforce that want to give you analytics. They want to give you predictive models. They want to help you decide things. And then in our ecosystem, we've got expert specialists uh, like Conga and Cogito, who are going to be giving de you're going to be seeing demos from both of them today, uh, and from you know predictive model titans like IBM. So this brings up some challenges. All of this insight leads to first the question of how do I integrate all of this? How do I keep from having to go to 10 different places every time I want to figure out what to do? And how do I mix it and figure out? How to, which one is more important at a given point? How do I get those insights once I've figured out what's the most important one? How do I get it in front of the right person? How do I get it, and, that, and, and it needs to be at the right moment. It needs to be at the point of maximum impact. And then once I've done that, it's, it does no good for me to come up with a recommendation and get that recommendation in front of maybe a service cloud agent, maybe a customer, and have them say, yes, I want to accept that recommendation. Does, that's, that's no good at all if there isn't a clear way that I can turn that into action. And a lot of sources of insight are a little like silos. They are very good at coming up with the idea. But when it comes to the action, they're kind of like, well, that's not our thing. You got to kind of go do 10 things if, that, if that's accepted. So to solve those, that, this sort of new set of challenges and help Salesforce customers manage their growing set of insights, we are bringing next best action to the Salesforce platform to help you deliver the optimal recommendation at the point of maximum impact. And so the focus for us is on unification. How do you unify your sources of insight? And we, how do you do it in a way that allows you to span business rules, simple practical policies that must be, put into, must be put into effect in your organization to advanced predictions based on elite predictive model AI? How do you mix that together? We make that very easy to do with Next Best Action. And we also make it very easy to work both with the data that is in your Salesforce environment and the data that's not in your Salesforce environment. Because when we talk to our customers, one of the things they said was the decisioning elements, things like credit report, payment status, these are not things that are likely going to be found in Salesforce. They're going to be in a different enterprise system. So we had to make that easy. So surface that actionable intelligence. Once we have it, once we have figured out what the right insight is for the right moment, how do you get it to the right user, where they can have effect? We don't want a situation where only a small number of highly trained individuals in the organization can benefit from this. It's really leveraged when you can deploy it to the entire sales organization or the entire service organization. And then finally, connect that recommendation to powerful automation. And here we take advantage of Salesforce's mature flow automation technology uh, to provide a, a, a huge range of follow-up activity that's very potent. So how does it work? You start by defining some recommendations. 
And you basically get to create these, and then you create something new that we've, we're, we're bringing to Salesforce called a strategy. The strategy is where you instruct the next best action engine on how you want to prioritize things. And you can create different strategies for different situations in different environments. Then there's integrating the insights. So the whole point of this, all this talk about integration, make that easy to happen. Figure, make it e figure out how you're going to present your recommendations, which pages you want those to surface on. And then finally, how you're going to activate them, what steps you want followed when that recommendation is accepted. So let's drill down a little, and then you're, we're just going to hammer you with cool demos. Uh, so the recommendations themselves, we've deliberately made them standard Salesforce records. We wanted you to be able to take advantage of the fact that you don't have to be an administrator to edit a Salesforce record. We want to democratize this process as much as possible. And we also give you the ability to customize your recommendations. In this example, in the little magnifying glass, you can see we've added product season as, as a factor, as a field that can be decisioned on uh, in this particular org. And then we make it possible to, to link that to a lightning flow. The strategies themselves are built in Strategy Builder. This is a new tool that is being built alongside the new Flow Builder. And you're going to see a great deal of effort has been made to make these builders work the same and look the same so that you, once you, when you learn how to do something in one, it's very easy to take that to another. And so you can see what you're seeing there is you're seeing some of the funnel aspect of the next best action of a recommendation engine. Those boxes on the left are all possible recommendations. And as they travel towards the right, there's a filtering process that takes place. And then the winning recommendations exit on the right side of that strategy. And, are, and then they're available for presentation. So these strategies can vary. You might create this. A simple example is you want a different strategy, making different recommendations to your call center agents than you do to your inside salespeople. But you can also create flavors of strategies for different situations. You could create a strategy that makes sense on the weekends and use a different strategy during the weekday, or a strategy that's optimized for the French office uh, because it uses all of the French language created propositions. And so the insights are connected up to the strategy using existing Salesforce integration technology. These are things that, that things like external services, invocable actions, Apex classes. And what hap what's happening is integrations are being built by a range of partners. These are all integrations that already exist, even though Next Best Action is, is only in pilot. So what we're anticipating is that we're going, to have a, we're going to be able to leverage the power of the Salesforce ecosystem so that when you want to hook up your decisioning process from this to, say, you know, IBM Watson, you can simply install something from the App Exchange, or maybe we'll even have it bundled in the box for you. Pre, I've talked about presenting the recommendations to the, to the person that's going to consume them. That's, that's often going to be a Salesforce user, but also this is being built to work with guest users in Community Cloud. And you can see that the, the lightning component that we've designed here is sort of heading down a path to be the preeminent way of displaying a, a recommendation to a user. This lightning component makes the call, pulls that data in, and displays it. And it's, but it's worth pointing out that the, the end point that this lightning component is calling can be called from any piece of code. So if you've got your own use for the decisioning power of Salesforce as this integrating platform, you can simply call that endpoint, get the data back as JSON, and display it in your own fashion as you see fit. The final step, the flow automation, is uh, something near and dear to, to me because I'm also a product manager on the Lightning Flow team. Flow allows you to hook up a large, a large complex business process that you can have take place right after that recommendation is accepted. And we'll show you a few demonstrations of these as well. 
But I, I have really, uh, I've been talking enough. Let's get some of our customers, let's get some of our partners up on stage here. We're gonna start with the sales, uh, sales scenario and I want to introduce from NCR, Tony Martin and Iron Meng. Please give them a hand. Thanks, Alex. So I'm Tony V. Martin. I am a senior Salesforce business analyst at NCR. And at NCR, we power millions of global um, transactions, financial transactions across a network of hardware, software, and services on um, things including ATMs, um, retail point of service systems, as well as travel self-service kiosks. And as such, we have a large number of legacy contracts that need renewing. Um, for our renewals reps, this means that they need to maintain an awareness of contract end dates, whether a contract is able to be negotiated or if it's a standard renewal, um, as well as um, other items that they have to keep track of in their head. So with all of this resulting in manual time, um, the reps have to interact with various different teams at NCR, as well as do a lot of manual processing. Next Best Action presented a solution that would allow us to eliminate many of the manual steps in the process. So with that said, I will hand it off to my colleague at NCR, Iron Ming, who is going to do a walkthrough of what we've been able to accomplish with Next Best Action and show you guys Next Best Action in action. It's a lot easier to use than to say. <laughs> All right, thanks, Tony. So today I'm just gonna take you through a quick demonstration of how NCR was able to utilize the Next Best Action pilot to really streamline some of the use cases within our contract renewal process. So I'm gonna be playing the role of a renewals agent. So as a renewals agent, it's really my responsibility to own a contract and the renewals lifecycle from start to finish, um, whether that's through contract analysis, discovery, customer negotiation, and just overseeing that the contract does indeed get executed. So here's a pretty um, standard contract record that a renewals agent would look at. You have your, your customer end date, start date, value, um, and some other key pieces of data. And you can see right off the bat that Einstein is kicking off recommendations saying, hey look, you have some missing data. So data quality is all obviously an issue within any organization, no matter how many strict data standards that we try to implement. Um, we're human, it happens, we get it. So let's just correct it and then move on within the uh, analysis process. So I accepted the action and it's saying, there's some key data points missing in this contract, so let's just work with our sales team to acquire the missing information and update the record. So let's just say I've already had you know, a conversation with my sales team, we've identified the agreement, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put in the agreement ID. Success, your contract has been updated. All right, excellent. So you can see that the agreement ID is indeed populated. Um, all right, so moving forward, it seems like after that was populated, Einstein kicked off another recommendation, right? So it's saying based on terms, the contract does not fall into NCR's standard policy. So really as a renewals agent, you well, really, as a renewals agent, it's part of my job to really go through and deep dive into the key terms of the contract. And then from there, we can um, sort of identify if the contract is standard or if it falls outside of NCR's policy. Because if it is standard, the renewals policy is straight shot forward, easy peasy, no issue. But because it is non-standard, that's when you really have to meet with a customer and negotiate key terms that um, is beneficial to us in terms of our pricing strategy and gives our customers uh, a flexible package. So what would have been tons of manual work is actually all automated right here. So Einstein was able to say, hey look, based on your terms, this does not fit within the standard policy. So 
you, um, you need to go ahead and schedule that contract negotiation session and get moving. So let's kick it off. So you can see due to the current contract package, before going to the contract proposition phase, phase a negotiation session is highly recommended. So I'm just going to go ahead and schedule that. So you're using the power of flow here to essentially yep. make forms to gather the information needed right at that point of impact. So I'm filling out the negotiation strategy. Any notes? And here's just a optional little checkbox called notified executive. So I know in this instance with um, our high profile customer that our sales vice president might have a good relationship with them. So if I bring her along, it might help smooth out the negotiation process. So I'm just going to check that. Hit next. So you've deemed it necessary to notify an ex executive regarding this deal. So within Flow, I can just send an email right here. So all of these capabilities, of course, sending email, checking boxes, updating fields, have long been available in Salesforce. One of the things Next Best Action does is simply make it easier to get, this, get these right to the point where they can have the most impact. And with that, the email was sent. So now the executive and the renewals agent can both attend the customer negotiation session. And what would have been a lot of manual effort was pretty much streamlined and automated. And you know, this is just the beginning of AI with um, NBA and NCR. So we really look forward to the possibilities of what we can do with Next Best Action. Excellent. Thanks. Thank you very much. I'm really appreciative of NCR for being so willing to tackle this technology early in the development cycle. All right, so let's talk, let's talk uh, now show you some stuff that's a little more platform oriented. When we think in terms of the Salesforce platform, we think in terms of providing services that ISVs can use to be more effective uh, and deliver more effective services. And so with that in mind, I'd like to invite up Nathan, Nathan Snell from Encino, one of our best partners, and he's going to show you how Encino is using Next Best Action. Thanks, Alex. Does it take a second? No, it should, uh, should be able to. Weird, that's Maybe you have to kick out? This is not part of how Next Best Action works in Encino. There it is. OK. Um, so just to, to set some context really quickly. So at Encino, um, what we've done is we're an ISV, and we have a product that we call the bank operating system. And the bank operating system actually sits on top of the Salesforce platform. Uh, and, it, and it's a product that we use to service financial institutions really from you know, across the globe and ranging in size from, say, some of the largest banks in the world to some of, say, your smaller local community banks. Um, so for us, you know, we deliver this application as an ISV sitting on top of Salesforce, leveraging you know, all the standard stuff that you would expect, like accounts and contacts and whatnot. So what we're looking at here, just to start with, is Insight Financial. So that's sort of our, our demo uh, customer in this case. And we're starting off looking at an account or a customer of of Insight Financial, um, which is Port City Coffee. So first and foremost, there's some fields that you may not recognize um, as these come from the Encino application. And part of what you can see here, for example, is FICO score. So Alex had mentioned earlier bringing in different sources of insight. So in our case, with the Encino product, part of what we actually pull in are things like credit reports, um, FICO scores, and different details, because that's ultimately part of how our customers use Encino to originate loans, open deposits, and so on. 
Um, what I'm showing off here to begin with is you also see Einstein Discovery. So one of the really common requests that we got from our customers was the ability to actually recommend a product to their, you know, their customers, so in this case, Port City Coffee. And what they wanted was not just something that was rules-based, but something that actually leveraged intelligence behind the scenes. So you know, we ended up marrying, as a result, Einstein Discovery to produce different product recommendations with uh, the actual next best actions, in this case, what we call Encino recommendations from an ISV standpoint, to be able to then recommend what the right product should be. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do here right now, as you can see, we don't have any recommendations. This is because the strategies that Alex talked about, uh, part of our strategy is that if it doesn't meet, if the recommendation doesn't meet a threshold, we're not gonna show anything. So all these are below 20% in this case, and as a result, we're not gonna recommend something uh, to the salesperson that isn't gonna ultimately hit the mark. So we're gonna go ahead and update our credit score here. As a result, we're gonna say that uh, the credit score would say 725. And part of this, as you can see, is because we see uh, one of the prescriptive factors from discovery is that if the customer has a better credit score, then there'd be likely more products to recommend. Obviously, it's not usually as simple as just changing their credit score. It actually has to change, but you can bear with me for the sake of the demo. Uh, so as you can see, in, in real time, very quickly, uh, actual recommendations from Next Best Action occurred. So we can see, in this case, uh, a term loan recommendation is here. And that's partially because you can see from discovery, all these things actually jumped based on that factor being updated. So term is a 94% rec uh, recommendation, which is why we actually see here in Next Best Action now that the recommendation of a term loan being offered to the customer is what showed up. Um, what you may also notice is you can also, through Next Best Action, recommend multiple things. So in this case, going to golf with Krista, who's the owner of Port City Coffee, popped up. And the reason that that's the case is because in our strategy, there's a few things that happened. One, on the contact, there's a hobby field that's used. And in that hobby, we noted that Krista really likes golf. As part of our strategy, too, because this is a larger customer, we wanted the sales manager to be able to have sort of a recommendation of relationship building at the same time. So we didn't want to just say, hey, we'll go and recommend a term loan, call them up. We wanted to say, hey, there's actually an opportunity here, one, to forge a relationship. So go golfing with, you know, go golfing with Krista, kind of begin to understand what other needs she may have, and at the same time, actually, let's go ahead and recommend a product in this situation. And like Alex mentioned, this is all connected to flow. So in this case, I'll hit start term loan. What's actually going on behind the scenes very quickly in this case is a net new products being added to Port City Coffee. And in this case, it's actually quite small here, but I'll go ahead and click on it. So what actually happened is a, a net new product was started, a loan was started for Port City Coffee, in this case of the type that was described. And from there, it actually did, it made all the connections that you'd expect. And uh, what we can actually see as a result too is, and I had it fast forward a little bit here, is that a new recommendation is actually generated. So one of the things that we just saw, right, was being able to make a recommended product. But as an ISV from an Encino standpoint, one of the things that was important to us is, you know, while the Einstein next best action component is really awesome, there's some different elements that we wanted to pull together in creating our own custom recommendation component. And that's actually what you're seeing here. So this is where we actually used, again, Einstein from an intelligence standpoint to predict how long might it be to actually close this particular loan. In our situation, you know, we estimated that it's actually 16 days longer than uh, what was ultimately created from the actual flow itself. So you can see we have a target close date, a projected close date. We actually show some different details. All that's from the predictions. And then much like you saw before, so we're still exposing just in a little bit of a custom format, the ability to reject an offer or ultimately be able to actually take that recommended offer. So again, same thing as you just saw, but in this case, we're actually querying against the strategies as Alex mentioned before to represent you know, the best recommendation here. And if I push close date, then ultimately it'll go through and it'll move our close date out to the recommended step. And for us as Encino, I mean, one of the great things about this is instead of us having to go through and create all this different capability where you know, we want to go and be able to make these recommendations as well as capture what actions are being taken, through Next Best Action, we're able to go and plug all of the Einstein capabilities into this recommendation engine. So that's a whole lot less that we have to build on the ISV side, and instead we can focus then on delivering the sort of insights that our customers want and the recommendations that they expect. So that way it's not just, oh, well, hey, your turn percent or, your, you know, or this product is something that you should maybe recommend. They've got next steps that they can take. So thanks, Alex. Great. Thank you very much, Nathan. That's a really excellent example of how you can take the data that the Next Best Action service delivers and display it in your own application. Yeah, so let's, this is a, this is a slide that, uh, that we didn't get a chance to show. 
the Encino challenge and solution. So let, I want to show you another example. We uh, have a video of, the, of a great demo from Conga. They'll actually be doing this live in an extended version tomorrow at 1 p.m. Uh, is it 1 p.m. or is it 11? 11, 11, at 11 in, a the, in, a, in our NBA final theater session. But this is a really cool example. Just like Encino has specialized knowledge about financial, Conga has specialized knowledge about documents and contracts. So watch what happens here. We'll create our new contract. So actually use the customer's master service agreement. So now we have our new contract. And first thing we see is Einstein has a recommendation. We haven't seen the contract yet. So we'll wait on this, on this one, not take any action at this point. As we scroll down, we see the first step in this process had been generated, which is to upload the third party contract file. So here's the agreement we received from the customer. It has several terms that we'll need to review and negotiate. So with that file uploaded, we can scroll up and see that Einstein now has a recommendation for us that several of the clauses that are in this document aren't in our clause library. So there's a recommendation to build new clauses from the file. So we'll go through our flow. Now when we take another look, see those clauses have been built. They're all now in our system as data. Back on our contract, we have some additional Einstein recommendations. Classify the contract type. We can accept that. And now we have a customer. We have an initial payment requirement, a term set, and a start date have been updated according to what's in that contract. We also have a couple additional items. Because we have our clause language in here as data, Conga Insights has analyzed it and found some of these clauses are outdated. Some regulatory changes have occurred, and we need to add or change those clauses in some way. Uh, we've also have one that clauses are, some are one-sided. So we can accept that. When we refresh our clause, we'll see that some additional information has been added. And we can also see that it, there's now a revision for that one. We'll do the same with our one-sided contract language. We've made <coughs> enough changes here, so we'll just say no thanks to this. And since we've uploaded our third-party contract file and done our initial review, we can complete this step. And now we have our finance and security review and approval steps, which are the next two that need to be done in parallel prior to moving on to legal for final approval. So in fairness to them, I told them they could only have 90 seconds for their video. <laughs> and that's, uh, but uh, like I said, there'll be an extended version tomorrow. So you saw really nice integration there. You saw some workflows and you saw, one of the things I really like about that demo is that you've got a complex business process that has multiple steps and multiple stages. And at each of those stages, Conga might come up with a whole bunch of a variety of tasks and things to do. But the person who's actually using Salesforce right then, they're kind of being guided at every step of the way and being told, OK, do this now. OK, do this now. So we're trying to make people much more, more productive, more efficient, and make the whole process more effective. All right, now I'd like to show you a couple examples of service cases. Uh, Salesforce has a strong partnership with IBM. Uh, I, have, I did a demo last year with David about Lightning Flow. This year, he's helping by showing us some very cool integrations with IBM and some of its backend technology. So please welcome David Trent. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm David Trent. I lead our global industry solutions team within our um, Salesforce Blue Wolf practice. And um, yeah, next slide. Just some background on who we are, what we do. So this is a great use case around integrated insight. You mentioned that. It's a key thing. And that's what we um, developed and build within our solution. And what it is is that we're using AI already through Watson. So Watson with IBM. You know, Watson's going to touch about a billion people uh, this year. And some of the things that we're doing with um, our AI is that uh, it's creating a lot of automation. It's doing a lot of cases. Our AI is reducing call times by 20% up 20% currently. And right now, it's 3 million callouts in our own deployment of Salesforce with Watson to do those service calls. And what I'm really excited about is to show the actual automation of integrated insights through this. So uh, next slide will kind of give you an idea of what the um, uh, uh, demo looks like. So with this, what you're seeing here is just pause real quick. What you're seeing right here is that we're putting um, a lot of insights onto the platform 
including weather. So here's an example of uh, Watson Weather integrated all into the service console and through the account page. And so the scenario here is that um, flow, which is a huge hurricane coming through uh, the Carolinas right now, having um, some impact on the accounts. And for one of our customers, National Grid, have these power supplies. So what's, what Einstein's doing is once that weather and real live data coming through service cloud, it's actually going to prompt a real real-time next best action. So hit play real quick. And what happens is that now Einstein's recommending to send a massive SMS. But we also want to get to have the agent uh, have control of which SMS in which area. And it's prompting us to actually send this SMS through only the red regions of weather. And that's where you can have this uh, quick flow. It's really easy to use. And here's for National Grid. Do we want to send the SMS to these regions, these counties? Only we only want Bristol, Plymouth, and, and Sussex. So that's what it's doing there, just, and it's actually going to ask the agent what message you want to send out. And we type it in, we type next, and all that's done within Flow as well as Einstein recommendation. Let me pause it real quick. So the next recommendation here is around services. So now you saw the account servicing page, and this is services and sales. How IBM comes together with Einstein is that the model inside of Watson has high um, uh, predictability and accuracy of when a customer is going to churn, when a customer is going to have a low NPS score, but also when well, there's critical moments for uh, Watson to reach out to uh, clients. So what you're seeing here is actual IoT integrated into the Salesforce platform. So we have signals and servers and chips are all, all around the world with these, these power supplies with our customers. That data is getting pumped into Salesforce in real time. So if a power a supply goes out or if a circuit goes down, it it puts a, a record in Salesforce. And what Watson's doing here is it's creating a massive auto cases be, based on that. And so Watson puts that in, information inside of Salesforce, and then Einstein's going to actually ask and make a recommendation to resolve those IoT cases. So hit play. So once the recommendation comes up, uh, we want to hit resolve those cases. And at this point, we hit accept. We actually look into um, the flow of what's, what needs to happen next. We look at if this customer has a warranty or not. And then we go to the next step of actually sending out those notices. And if you want to pause real quick, I always want to show you something. There's a confidence score that you see there at 75%. And that's a threshold that Watson's generating in real time through these different analytics, through these different models that we have. And what you'll see next is going to be two different recommendations based on these type of insights. So hit play. So the agent would type in, there's some weather coming out. That's happening with the area, the national grid is going to be impacted, and he types that information in. So what you're seeing next now is that because of the text that was typed in by the agent, um, two recommendations came up. Can you pause real quick? What Watson did is it took natural language understanding of that text, analyzed it, and said from 75%, now it went up to 95% of a score that we need to proactively reach out to this client in a different way. So it's reading, the AI is reading the text itself and making a different recommendation based on the original recommendation. So now not only do we have to uh, dispatch somebody out to the field, not just shut the, the power supply down, well, we actually have to dispatch a service agent out there. In addition to that, Watson's saying, hey, this person's not on renewal contracts. So it's a sales opportunity that we should look at giving our um, top clients a renewable, uh, a, serve, a platinum level contract for his or her account. So if you want to hit play, at this point, the agent can actually hit um, notify customer and also make the dispatch. So that was just a quick view into how two AI's platform work together, a really powerful theme that we really are excited with our customer, which is integrated insights. And uh, thank you for uh, giving us the opportunity to share this, Alex. Thank you very much, David. Let's hear it for that. What's real, what I really like about that is how, is how it does such a good job of taking this deep IBM technology, language recognition, weather analysis, and makes it accessible. And makes it accessible to the, sales pe the, 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 the Salesforce users on the front lines. That really is, I think, the highest and best use of the next best action service. The last demo uh, from a partner that we want to show is a very, very cool uh, example uh, by Cogito, uh, who have a capability of analyzing an actual service call 
voice stream in real time and discerning insights and recommendations to give to a service cloud agent. So let's play that. Uh, and and here, here's, how, here's, here's, uh, here's how Stephen Cogito talk about it, about how it's really distilling emotional intelligence. And that's, that's exactly the kind of advanced insight that we as a platform want to enable. So let's uh, roll that. What you're going to hear is an actual call, and you're going to see what happens. It's uh, behind, uh, yeah, I think it's behind there. Excellent. Thank you for calling ABC Bank. This is Anthony. How can I help you today? Hi, I have a question about an interest charge on my account. Okay, I can definitely help you with that. Uh, first, could you provide your full name and date of birth to verify your account with us? Oh, sure. It's Jennifer Bateman, March 14th, 1975. Sorry for the delay, Jennifer. Um, okay, I've got your account up. Uh, which charge did you have a question about? So I pay my credit card balance in full every month. I've had this card with you for six years now, so I'm sure you can see that very clearly. Last month, I put off paying online till late in the day on the due date, but I figured that would be fine. But when I logged in today to pay my bill, I see that not only did it take two days to post last month, but I got hit with an interest charge because the two days put me over the due date. I usually just ignore it, but the charge was pretty significant. Is there anything you can do? Oh my gosh, absolutely. Uh, and I see that charge right here on the account. Um, let me go ahead and take that off for you. Uh, also, uh, because you're such a valuable customer, I see you actually qualify for our Premier Elite Rewards card. Uh, usually this card has an annual fee of $150. But today, we'd actually like to offer it for you for free for two years. Are you interested in a free upgrade? Free rewards? Sure. Great. So I love the way that in real time, the insights are popping up on the screen and then going away when they're no longer relevant. And I don't know if you noticed, but the underlying offer, there was an offer to begin with, and then when the Cogito Insight was processed by the Next Best Action strategy and it detected the customer getting upset, it upgraded the offer to the free credit card. And that's a great example of different systems being, you know, working together and being integrated at the Salesforce engagement layer uh, and to produce something that's far more than the sum of the parts. So that's... Uh, that's basically uh, what we have time for today. We, we can do uh, a couple questions. Um, let me see, do we have a, our roadmap slide, path to general availability? So it's in, it's in a closed pilot right now. It's gonna be generally available in four months when spring 19 is available at the beginning of February. Uh, we're still working on the pricing and the packaging for it, but where it, what it's currently looking like every org is going to get a sort of freemium monthly budget of next best action requests. So everyone's going to get a chance to experiment with this and see how they can add some value to their own organization. Uh, we have a microphone here. Do we have any questions in the audience? Yeah. The question is, uh, is, is in a product scenario, where is the true AI in a scenario like this? The answer is, well, we're definitely not trying to be yet another predictive model creator with this particular product. Um, one demo that I, I love to give, but we just didn't have time to give here, is where we're actually pulling product recommendations from Commerce Cloud Einstein. So in, in an office in Cambridge, Salesforce has an office full of people who specialize in that. That's all they do. They're the ones who are really good at product recommendations. And if you went to the Commerce keynote a few hours ago, you saw some of that in action. So the way you would do this is you would hook that up 
to your next best action strategy. And that would allow you to mix those product recommendations and you could end up doing something like I do in my demo where I take one product and kind of add that to all of the uh, sets of recommendations that are going out. So there's always a product upsell to be offered along with all the other items. Good question. Other questions? Yes? So maybe we just didn't have time for it, but is there marketing use cases where you're going to do like optimal content for email or banner ads showing on the website? Question, this question's about what about the marketing side? Uh, well, one way we're addressing that is by integrations with Marketing Cloud. So another demo that I didn't have time to show is when we take our, our Interaction Studio product, which is sort of Salesforce's most specialized technology in tracking customer behavior. They track every page that customer visits on your website. And they're hooked into Journey Builder, which is the whole marketing drip campaign capabilities and all of that. So in our demo, what we do is we plug that in so that the strategy requests, hey, are there any insights about this customer from that customer's behavior patterns? That can be mixed in with all of these other insights. And in, in the case, in the example we give, the, the customer service agent is being told, hey, you know what, they visited this page a lot, but they've never added it to the cart. Why don't you ask if they wanna, if they wanna buy that particular product? So we're at the beginning of a journey that will involve more and more integration with marketing services, uh, both from Salesforce and beyond Salesforce. Got a question back here. Right. Right. Yes, we do. Let me just show you a picture of, let's see, do I have it here? This doesn't look quite like it. Uh, did I get our, uh, here it is. All right, so here uh, is a preview version of the builder tools for next best action strategies. And what you'll see up here, these three blue boxes, these are connections. So these are connections, and each of these connections, these use Salesforce technology, a good example, you can build an Apex class. So if you have web services that have truth, you can build a strategy and with a very small amount of programming, be calling out to your services endpoints, pulling in the necessary sources of truth and using them in this decisioning process. Now that isn't gonna cause them to be persistent. You certainly don't have to sync all of your data into Salesforce to do that. So we're very focused on making sure that in real time you can pull whatever you need into the strategy to make those decisions. That's exactly right. Let me see if I can come up with an, so here, uh, well, that's, that's, that's actually a, uh, that, that's actually not the one. Um, I don't have, yeah, I don't have the exact, uh, exact way to show it to you, but you're absolutely right. When you set up one of these connections, the connection says, hey, strategy, these are the three variables that, these are the three values I'm gonna make available to you at runtime. Based on the context that you give me, like a contact ID or a case ID, I'm gonna give you back three values. You can do whatever you want with those three values. And then you use them in expressions. And the expressions are, uh, some of these nodes, such as these gate nodes here, are basically expressions that, uh, end up being like a typical Salesforce formula. So this one's saying, hey, if the payment status on the contact of this, that's associated with this case is delinquent, 
tell them to start basically pass through a collect payment recommendation. It's going to pop right up on the service uh, console screen saying you need to collect some money. Well, thank you. I hope so. We started out a year ago more as a product, and now we see ourselves more as a framework, a sort of a platform service and framework. Uh, happy to take a few more questions. Uh, and uh, otherwise, uh, thank you all very much. Feel free to come up if you have any questions you want to just ask me personally. Uh, thank you very much for letting us show you Next Best Action. And if you want to see a little more, tomorrow at 11, you'll see a longer conga demo at the Einstein Theater on the third floor. So thank you.